Do you scratch your own itch? I love when people create products to solve their own problems. The belief is, if I find this product useful, other people might find it useful too. In other words, it can be a great strategy to find ways to scratch your own itch. Let me share one of my favorite stories, the story about the Palm Pilot. In the mid-90s, entrepreneur and innovator Jeff Hawkins had an idea. He wanted to create a personal digital assistant or PDA. In his previous role, Jeff had designed the grid pad that was released in 1989. The grid pad was a tablet with a stylus that could recognize handwriting. But here was the problem. It was huge and heavy, 4.5 pounds or two kilos. Who's gonna carry that around? So Jeff knew it was an engineering marvel, but it was just too big. Fast forward to the mid 90s. Jeff and his colleagues are considering the new device. Determined not to make the same mistake twice, Jeff is ready when his colleagues ask him, how small should this device be? Jeff looked at them and said, it should fit in a shirt pocket. Before committing to building an expensive prototype, Jeff wanted to test some of the assumptions he had about this new amazing device. He knew he could build it, but would he use it? What would he use it for? And how often would he use it? Jeff went to his garage to look for parts to build a very basic version of the path. First, he took a block of wood and he cut it so it would fit into his shirt pocket. Secondly, he took a chopstick and he modified the chopstick so it could work as his stylus. And lastly, he created some paper sleeves that represented different user screens that he could put on top of this block of wood. Jeff then took his wooden PDA, put it in his pocket, and he carried it around for several months, pretending it was a real computer. If he was in a meeting, he would take it out and he would pretend that he was taking notes. If someone asked him, hey Jeff, are you free for lunch on Monday? He would take it out, tap on it, and pretend he was checking his calendar. If he wanted to make a call, he would take out his wooden PDA and he would look for the phone number. Yes, people looked at Jeff and they thought he was crazy when they saw him taking notes, checking appointments, and synchronizing a small block of wood with his PC, all the while pretending that this thing was a real computer. But Jeff persisted and he learned that he would actually carry such a device in his pocket, using it for mainly four things. Address book, calendar, memo, and to-do list. Of course, Jeffy knew that a sample size of one would not be sufficient to determine that other people would love the Palm Pilot 2. He would have to run more tests to validate the interests in the rest of the market. But the idea passed the very first important test. It proved that the inventor himself would use it. You might say, so what? But you'll be surprised by how many people bring new products to the market without validating first that they would actually use these products themselves. So what happened? This simple experiment with a block of wood, some paper and a chopstick helped Jeff collect enough data to justify the much bigger investment in a proper working prototype. The team continued developing the Palm Pilot until they had a final working version. Here you see the final Palm Pilot compared to the original wooden prototype. As you can see, there are many similarities. In 1996, the Palm Pilot was released to the market and people loved it. It was an incredible success. In one of my favorite books, The Right It, the author Alberto Savoia calls this type of low resolution prototyping for Pinocchio. Why Pinocchio? Because Pinocchio was a wooden puppet that dreamt about one day becoming a real boy. Just like Jeff Hawkins had a dream that one day his wooden PDA would turn into the real thing. So what's the point? Two things. Number one, how can you embrace the principle of creating products that scratch your own itch? Number two, how can you find ways to test those product ideas cheaply and quickly? 
to validate your assumptions. My name is Thomas Bay, and I'll be back next week with another video on innovation. Until then, make things better and make better things. Boom. When is the next video coming out? Let me check. I got a new PDA. Next Sunday. And look at that. It's in color.